Christ theology was what I heard first, how special that was. I was 26 years of age, already a graduate from college, been to the military, and uh, back. I had uh, plans to go to optometry school, but as things worked out, I returned to Mississippi State where I'd had my undergraduate degree. And right after graduation, I'd take, taken a number of hours in physical education. So I went back to the department head, and he suggested, ask if it would be possible to begin a martial arts course there in the curriculum, one per credit. And I said, uh, surely so. I changed my mind like immediately from optometry to physical education and things like that. So I was a grad student. And the way Grace came to me, uh, it's a three-month journey. The beginning was, I was, how could I say this, uh, after the military and uh, whatever the issue is, I had grown up in a church but unsaved and I was very much in rebellion to God at that time. Um, my spent my life doing things that were not proper and attending certain places that I should not have been in, if we could say it in that way. So my buddies suggested that we go to a place called NAPS, N-A-P apostrophe S, and I assumed it was another nightclub. Turned out to be a church. And it was on a Wednesday evening. I said, guys, are you crazy? What are you doing? He said, you won't believe this. And Dave's talking about how many good-looking girls were in the church. So we go in, and there's this white-haired guy. He's in his 40s. He's teaching the book of Revelation verse by verse and proposing a grace message, which I had never heard. I did not understand. So fortunately, I was out of there before too many people saw me, I thought. The next day we registered for grad school, a man named Don Dudley, a fellow student, he was a former Mississippi State uh, football player. He was from Wichita Falls, Texas, and he came up to me that day and said, hey Butch, I saw you at church last night, how long have you been a Christian? To which I said, oh, oh long time, I'm just, I've kind of wandered away from the faith. I probably didn't use those terms. but. And so, uh, as I said earlier, literally over a period of three months, Don Dudley loved me to Jesus Christ. The first thing he saw me do was punch a hole in the wall because I was angry at my uh, girlfriend, but he loved me through my arrogance and everything else. And so it was in November of 1973, oh gracious, November 73, a long time ago. We were sitting in my apartment, in Startable, it was Wood Manor, apartment 30B. And he just sat down and said, how do you know you're saved? And I gave him a long list of things that I'd heard preacher after preacher say, other people said, and it was a, pretty much a, a pretty solid uh, works list of what I'd done. And Don said, those are good things, but that's not how you get to heaven. I said, are you kidding me? He asked the question, do you know how good you have to be? Because my, my idea was that if, I, if my good outweighed my bad, then God would say welcome in. He asked, do you know how good you have to be? And I said, pretty good, I'm sure. His answer was, no, that's not enough. You have to be perfect, to which my response was, well, there's no way. And he says, that's the point. There's no way you can work your way to heaven. But Someone loved you so much that he actually took your place. And by this time, he'd been talking with me in and out for three months. And again, it was just kind of making sense. And um, he says, the Lord Jesus, he actually died for your sins, past, present, future. I can remember that. And says, what you need to do is respond to him. You need to believe in Christ. He's the giver of eternal life. You know, we talked in weeks past about the sin of del the dilemma of sin and the consequences and those things. And so Don was just very loving, very kind. I'd never seen anybody like him at that time. He suffered lots of ridicule, harsh mocking, all those things. But he just kept on. And he, like I said, he's a football player. He could have just slap the guy for talking like that. But he just he loved people. And he particularly loved me. I guess that was God's design. Certainly it was to bring me to his son. 
And so as we continued to talk, I began to ask questions, and really my questions finally got down to just one question, and it was like, do you mean? And I think it was at that point that I had been persuaded. I, I, I trusted in the Lord Jesus. I believed that he was the one who took my place, that, that uh, God was making me his child based upon the work of the Son, and I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I just believed the message. Uh, if I would have continued, if I could have said, do you mean whatever, I would have said, do you mean I'm really, uh, I'm not so wicked that God would, that he really would save me. And of course, Donna, sure, he says, he gave me illustrations. And, I'm, and, and, and I would say, well, what about my works? It's, you know, it's, you're not supposed to be good. And his response, well, that's life, you know, as a believer you're to live life, but it has nothing to do with your, you becoming a child of God. And so I didn't pray a prayer, I didn't promise God anything, I didn't commit my life, I didn't do, I just received the gift of eternal life. I was 26 years old, November 1973, and I can say as a guy a little older now that I've never once doubted that I'm a child of God. That's never been an issue for me. Assurance was mine from the very beginning. So you asked the question of when did I understand grace from the very beginning. We were in a church, the ministry of which I'm back a part of now, it's Emmanuel Baptist in Strawville, Mississippi. And there's been a four, five decade plus ministry of free grace. You know, just when I went to seminary, uh, the issues that were brought up, I already knew those things because of the pastor teacher and the way he taught us the details of the, the gospel of grace was to tell us this is what the gospel is not, and we worked through all kinds of issues. And so uh, I'm back there now working with a fellow uh, student, uh, Kenny Hodges, who's been there many years, and so uh, it was through the ministry of that church that uh, I came to Christ. Don Dudley was a protege of the guy, Nap Clark, who was the pastor. And Don, in fact, he's the one who began to disciple me. And I don't know if you're concerned, I'm not sure which one about this, but the, uh, I was saved in November, it's probably not until um, probably early February that I did a, what we would consider Romans 12 concept. Uh, the turmoil, the the agitation within was far worse after coming to Christ than it was even before because of the, my conscience was seared probably. I'd done so many things so wrong so many times that it didn't bother me any longer. But when I continued to enter into even some of those things, it was just not the same. And so as I learned later from growing a little, I realized that the Spirit of God was just letting me know that you don't belong to Satan anymore, you're not in the life of darkness, you're a member of the family of God, you're to walk in light. And and so sometime in February I said, okay, Lord, here I am, warts and all, whatever you would want to do with me, that's what I'm willing to do. And so that's how I came to faith, that's how I came to